we're now going to engage further of the asymptotic behavior of slightly more complex estimators that combine simpler estimators. We're going to do this using the multivariate delta method, and in particular, we're going to think about the multivariate delta method for influence functions in asymptotically linear estimators. To engage with this, let's return to the motivating question we've been considering for the last couple of slide sets. Let's imagine we have n observations drawn iid from a distribution f on the reals, and we're interested in estimating the coefficient of variation psi, which is this ratio of the population standard deviation divided by the population mean. We're going to use the estimator that we had mentioned before, psi hat, which is just the sample standard deviation divided by the sample mean. This is a plug-in estimator that combines two simpler estimators, sigma hat and mu hat. In particular, for the methodology here, it's going to be important that sigma hat and mu hat are asymptotically linear estimators of sigma and mu. As a reminder, we had previously shown that that estimator sigma hat over mu hat was consistent for sigma over mu and had a convergence rate of no slower than n to the negative one half. Now, if we scale this difference up by square root of n, we might be curious about what the asymptotic behavior of our estimator minus truth is. In particular, we might hope that this has some sort of an asymptotic normal distribution with mean zero and some variance that ideally we can characterize. As we will see, that turns out to be exactly the case. In fact, we will see that this estimator will be asymptotically linear for estimating this parameter, and the influence function will be a combination of the influence functions of sigma hat for estimating sigma and the influence function of mu hat for estimating mu. As a reminder, we previously saw that this vector sigma hat mu hat as an estimator of sigma mu was asymptotically linear with influence function, in this case, a two vector where we have the component corresponding to sigma hat and the component corresponding to mu hat. This is gonna be very important moving forward. In addition, using this, we saw that if we scale this difference up by square root of n, this piece disappears we are left with this piece. And so this standardized difference will converge in distribution to a mean zero multivariate Gaussian with covariance matrix that can be calculated from this influence function. In, in particular, it's the expectation of the outer product of this influence function with itself. Now, we would like to take this behavior, the behavior of estimator minus truth as a vector and use that to tell us about the behavior of the ratio of these two estimators minus the ratio of the two parameters. We're going to do this via linearization or a first order Taylor series expansion or what's sometimes called the delta method. So let's just remind ourselves how linearization or a first order Taylor series expansion works. If we have a differentiable function g of two variables, that function will look locally linear. If we consider small perturbations of that function, those can be well approximated by a linear function. So for example, if we have two points, point A, B, and point A naught, B naught, and they're nearby, then if we look at the difference between G of A, B, and G of A naught, B naught, this is to first order equal to this linear function. So it's the gradient of G evaluated at A naught, B naught, times sort of what we can think of as delta, how much this point A naught, B naught is perturbed to get to the point A, B. I've written this as an approximate statement, sort of informally here. We could actually write this as an equality and add a term that is little o of the norm of A, B minus A naught, B naught. And this is assuming that G is suitably differentiable. Our goal is to apply this with G of AB equals A over B, right? Because our parameter psi was sigma divided by mu. So that's the differentiable function that we're gonna care about here. Now, if we plug that in down here, just letting G of AB equal A over B, what do we get? we get that the difference between our estimator and our parameter is roughly a linear combination of these two pieces, sigma hat minus sigma and mu hat minus mu. And again, there's a higher order term that it turns out we're gonna be able to ignore. 
right? We could actually write this as plus little op n to the negative one half. I'm not going to go into the details formalizing that, but it's only a step or two noting that this vector converges to this vector at a rate of n to the negative one half. And so using any of the standard remainder formulas, like the one we used on the previous slide, we can very quickly get this. So now we can plug in our asymptotically linear representation for this difference up into this linearization. Right? And again, if we want this to be an equality rather than an approximation, we could actually put in a little op n to the negative one half. That would be fine. We still substitute this in up here. And what do we get? That leaves us with this really nice representation. So this says estimator minus parameter is an empirical average of these terms plus something that's asymptotically negligible, asymptotically converges to zero faster than n to the negative one half. So now if I let this function be written as phi of xi, and in fact we can multiply this out, then I have what looks like an asymptotically linear representation of our estimator minus our parameter. The last thing to do is just make sure that this influence function is mean zero. And sure enough, if we take its expectation, each of these terms is mean zero, so the whole influence function is mean zero. And this wasn't just a coincidence, right? It occurs because this piece here was the influence function of the vector sigma hat mu hat, and so it was mean zero. So any linear combination of that would also be mean zero. Excellent. So let's remind us what this says. This says that our plug-in estimator, sigma hat over mu hat, is an asymptotically linear estimator of our parameter sigma over mu with influence function equal to this. And now we can use all of the machinery of asymptotic linearity to do all of the things we like to do in statistics, right? If we scale up by square root n, then this becomes ignorable, and this difference, this standardized difference, will converge to a normal distribution whose variance is characterized by this influence function. It's just the expectation of the influence function squared. From here, we could get confidence intervals for sigma over mu via asymptotic normality. We would have to estimate the variance um, from the influence function, and to do that, we would need to plug in estimates of these parameters sigma and mu. So we did this in one example. What does this mean more generally? Well, if we start with p parameters, psi 1 to psi p, and p asymptotically linear estimators of those parameters, and we let the influence functions be denoted by phi 1 to phi p, and we want to estimate some differentiable combination of all of those p original parameters, and we do that by plugging in our estimates into that same differentiable transformation, then we actually know that this estimator is asymptotically linear for estimating this parameter. And its influence function, in fact, is given by this simple combination of the original influence functions and the gradient of this function g, right? So the influence function is just the gradient interproducted with that vector of influence functions. And from here, we not only get that this estimator is consistent for this parameter, and in fact converges at a rate of at least 1 over square root of n, we also see if we scale this up by square root of n and look at estimator minus parameter, that that will converge to a normal distribution with mean zero and variance that we can calculate um, without too much trouble. So that variance has one piece that's the outer product of the influence functions or the expectation of that outer product, and then a quadratic form involving the gradient of that differentiable transformation g. So this is a little ugly, and if people have seen the multivariate delta method in general, not just for influence functions, often it's stated in this way, but I think it's, it's quite useful and interesting to think about it in terms of influence functions instead. We considered one parameter in this slide set, the coefficient of variation, but there are lots of parameters where this is useful, thinking about estimating the correlation and simple linear regression parameters, among many others.